Hey guys, welcome back to the Nostalgic Neighborhood. Today we're diving into the world of fingerboarding. When I was a kid in the 80s, I had a couple of these old school fingerboards, but it wasn't something that I spent a lot of time doing. And then about 15 years ago, when my son was little, he had a bunch of these tech decks, and we had some fun doing that together. But honestly, after that phase, I've been pretty dismissive of fingerboarding. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. And when I've seen fingerboarding content show up on social media, I would typically just keep on scrolling. Okay, boomer. But in the last year or so, more and more fingerboarding videos keep finding their way into my feeds, and I started wondering, what's the deal with fingerboarding these days? So I've taken some time to dig in and learn more about it, and wow, yeah, I think I've been missing out. Go! It's no surprise that fingerboarding has evolved dramatically from these basic ones from the 80s, and today's pro fingerboards are essentially miniaturized wooden skateboards complete with functional trucks, urethane wheels, and even tiny bearings inside of them. But it's not just the equipment that's evolved, the community around fingerboarding has become incredibly vibrant. This isn't just kids playing with toys, it's about genuine skill and artistry. Just like the skateboarding world, there's everything from local hangouts and riders with sponsors to full-on competitions, all creating this rich mix of culture and competition that's just rad. So yeah, in today's video, we're gonna look back to the origins of fingerboarding in the 80s and quickly trace it through the Tech Deck era into the late 90s and into the impressive sport it is today. And a super huge thanks to Teak Tuning. They've been kind enough to provide us with a couple of fingerboards for our deep dive. And this isn't a sponsored video, but I was really drawn to them as an affordable step up from the plastic Tech Decks. They've got some really great options for enthusiasts who wanna level up their fingerboarding game without emptying their wallets. Spoiler alert, the Teak Tuning board rolls so much better than the tech deck does. That's crazy. I can't wait to share more about these teak tuning setups later in the video, but first let's dial it back to the 80s to see where fingerboarding began. So yeah, in 1985, Powell Peralta's Future Primitive video brought fingerboarding into the spotlight. This is where many of us saw it for the first time. Lance Mountain showcases his skills in an old kitchen sink while Bones Brigade members like Tony Hawk and Mike McGill cheered him on. And I remember thinking that this was just too cool. And I gotta think this marked the beginning of fingerboarding's journey from a super obscure pastime to the much broader recognition that it sees today. I got this one around 1987, and its graphics bring back a bunch of memories of when I lived in Richmond. My mom would occasionally take my buddies and me to skate the ramps at Mount Trashmore in Virginia Beach, which coincidentally was also featured in Future Primitive. And it's pretty basic with its trucks and deck molded into one piece. And with the grip tape scraps that I added on the back, it sure brings back a flood of nostalgia. And then let's fast forward to the late 90s when fingerboarding really started getting popular again with the introduction of tech decks. They became a cultural phenomenon, sort of like the way my generation collected Hot Wheels and G.I. Joe guys, but even older middle school kids were totally into them too. They were everywhere. So yeah, while tech decks were a huge upgrade from the OGs from the 80s, even today the basic ones still aren't great for more serious riding. And then that brings us into the era of custom professional grade fingerboards. Modern fingerboards evolved to feature real wooden decks made with five thin plies of veneer, often using the same types of maple that's used in real seven ply skateboards. The trucks underwent a revolution too, from static unmovable parts to fully functional ones with actual bushings and tuning capabilities that allow for real turns and improved control. And the wheels, they transitioned from rock hard plastic to polyurethane and sometimes even urethane just like real skate wheels. And they're complete with miniature bearings offering smoother rides and better grip. This transition opened up a whole new world for fingerboarding enthusiasts. It wasn't just about sliding and flipping a piece of plastic anymore. Plus with social media platforms evolving, especially with TikTok and Instagram reels, sharing and viewing fingerboarding content became easier and more engaging than ever. And yeah, it's become so popular again that even middle-aged dudes like me are seeing it in our feeds. And that brings us to the heart of today's video, exploring the modern era of pro fingerboarding with these new setups thanks to Teak Tuning. And after doing a bit of research, I became interested in trying it out. However, I found that prices for complete setups from recommended premium brands start at 69 bucks, and they could even go up past 125 bucks, which seemed excessive for a mere curiosity. And then many options required international shipping, leading to long wait times. 
So I searched for affordable fingerboards that were better than Tech Dex. Antique Tuning repeatedly emerged as a recommended brand that offers great value without being overly expensive. So Teak Tuning has some impressive but affordable Gen 2 complete fingerboards priced at just under 25 bucks. And these boards come well equipped with a five ply wooden decks, uh, trucks featuring genuine bushings. Uh, they've got polyurethane wheels and, and they come with bearings and then they come with foam grip tape and then all the necessary tools and hardware to get it all set up. And they cater to the nostalgic crowd too with these uh, retro 80s shaped boards available. So yeah, I was stoked by what I discovered and I reached out to Teak Tuning to see if they'd be open to a collaboration. And they were receptive and generously sent over a couple of their setups for us to review here. The first one here is a complete street style setup. And then the other one is a bunch of components to build up a custom uh, kind of OG 80s cruiser style setup. And so yeah, I'm really stoked on this one, but let's check out the street setup first. So here we go. And my first impressions are that this is really awesome. It uh, feels really nice in hand. It's got a nice finish on it. It's really smooth. It's got the Teak logo, a laser etched on there. Uh, the wheels feel nice. They actually spin really well. It, that's surprising. I know they've got bearings in there. And then the trucks, they actually uh, move just like you would expect with some little bushings in there. And so yeah, that we've got that there. And then inside this other pack, we've got the grip tape. And then inside we've got the little skate tool to adjust the, the bearings and the wheels and, and you know the bolts for the trucks. Let's uh, plan to get the deck gripped first. So yeah, in the videos I've seen with the enthusiasts, they'll take this kind of file here and just rub the edge of that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. All right, there it is, that looks good. Yeah, I'm really impressed with how these wheels spin. You compare that to these old tech decks that hardly spin at all. Uh, these are polyurethane wheels, so uh, this $25 level deck does not have the, the uh, modern urethane wheels. I think that's where you're uh, maybe cutting the corner a little bit, but Teak has uh, urethane wheels and that's what they gave us for this other setup, so I'm stoked on that. So let's go ahead and get the other one set up, then we'll compare all of these, and then we'll get some of these obstacles out and we'll give it a couple of test runs. I love the idea of building like a complete custom board, just like I would with a, a regular skateboard, and I'm really excited about this uh, kind of old school uh, shape here. So let's get it out and check it out up close. It's got a nice big nose, just like a, a early 90s board would, late 80s. And yeah, I'm really stoked on this. This is going to be the one that I want to have set out and play with. So let's go ahead and maybe start with the trucks here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and set it up stock as is for now. And then I'll come back and check out these bubble bushings uh, a little bit later. These are really cool trucks. They just totally look like miniature, like miniature old school trucks. That's super cool. All right, that looks pretty good. I've always enjoyed the process of setting up a regular skateboard. It's always been kind of therapeutic. And this is really the same. It's just a scaled down version of that. It's pretty cool. Okay, that's good. All right, let's get the wheels. Okay, so these are urethane wheels. Uh, they've got a little bit more of a shape to them. They're a little bit bigger than the polyurethane ones. And they've got uh, bearings in there. So let's get these set up. Okay, wheels are on. Let's check out a few differences between all of these setups and then we'll give them a test run. And I'm just gonna lump all of these 80s and tech decks together because their performance is almost identical. And that's that they don't really roll that well. Uh, you can't feel much of a difference between whether you're rolling forwards or sliding. And that's because the wheels are rock hard. Uh, they don't spin that well and the trucks don't move at all. So these are all very limiting compared to the modern uh, pro style fingerboards. Uh, these two setups from Teak are similar, but there's a couple of differences. They both have their Prodigy Gen 2 trucks that will allow you to adjust the bushings and just how tight or loose you like them. Uh, this uh, uh, Prolific Complete, it's got uh, polyurethane wheels with some super high spinning uh, bearings in there that really allow this board to spin super well. Uh, the This Carlsbad Cruiser here, it's got Apex uh, wheels that are uh, urethane and they've got a higher uh, quality bearing in there that sealed their ABEC 9. 
and uh, it doesn't roll qu quite as freely, but it's much smoother and has a much more premium feel. And then also these urethane wheels, you can definitely feel the difference between going forward or sliding uh, sideways. So yeah, I'm really stoked on these uh, Teak decks, so let's check them out. All right, so let's start out with this little kicker ramp. Um, if you've watched any of my recent videos, this may be familiar. Yeah, I can't decide if I like the Cruiser more. It has the, the taller wheels, um, so the board it sits up higher. I think I like the street one better. I like the feel of this one with the, the urethane wheels. But I think the street one's a little easier to control. All right, let's move on. Let's get the half pipe out. Yeah, all, all these are my sons from when he was like 10 years old or something like that. And he's in his early 20s now. But uh, I never, like we got these and he kind of set them up. It was just more like collectibles, but we didn't really play with it. Or I didn't play with these that much with them, but. All right, this is cool. All right, let's try the street deck. All right, that's impressive. <laughs> okay, all right, so I found a new test. Uh, so we're gonna drop in. Okay, here's the old school 80s. Whoops. Okay, we'll drop in like this. All right, so it went up and landed back in the middle. Uh, tech deck. It doesn't even roll straight. And then uh, old, old, old school cruiser. Whoops. Okay, so that's cool, but then check this one out. That's crazy. Again, the tech, typical tech deck. All right, I'm a grown man playing with little skateboards, but I'm having a great time. This is really cool. A grown man playing with skateboards and talking to a camera in his kid's old bedroom. Does it get any better? Ah! Let's play with some of these uh, street stuff here. Let's hit the little bowl corner. This one's got to be cool because it says Tony Hawk on it. You know, I think the half pipe is the most fun so far, and this little kicker ramp is fun. See, this is more like my speed <laughs> in the in the real on the real skateboard too. I made this to scale, so uh, the real one that I made is a, a foot tall and about 40 inches long, and I tried to scale up as if this board was just slightly under a foot tall, and so. This is a fairly realistic sized ramp. It's kind of fun. And there you have it, guys. A deep dive from the rudimentary boards of the 80s to the advanced setups of today's uh, fingerboarding world. I'm totally impressed with these Teague tuning setups that we explored today. It's evident that this isn't just about rekindling old flames, but igniting new passions. And whether you're a seasoned skateboarder, an injured or disabled skater, or a lapsed fingerboarder, or someone just looking for a new hobby, I think there's something in fingerboarding for you. So if you're intrigued by the intricate world of fingerboarding, or if you're looking for for a way to reconnect with the skate culture in a new and more accessible way, I highly recommend checking out Teak Tuning. Uh, visit their website and explore their range, and maybe, just maybe, you'll find yourself skating, albeit on a smaller scale, into a new hobby. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with more content from the Nostalgic Neighborhood, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep those fingers rolling. <laughs>